Everybody's waiting. So, so glad you guys are here. So we're going to get started. We're going to keep it kind of light. This is a very laid back uh, smile group today. I'm not going to make it too much pressure. We're just going to talk about one topic. Normally I do three, but today I just want to really zoom in on lust and love. Okay. So if you can grab your smile group, I know everybody online, you can see it on the screen, but also we have the actual hard copy of the smile group. Um, something that I'm going to go through to show you guys how we're going to decipher. Okay. Um, first of all, I just like to always read off the mission statement of the smile group. This group was created to encourage us to reconcile with our smile. Um, to realize we can learn from each other. So this conversation is not just me talking to you or only to you. I want to get feedback. I want to feel where you guys are going through. Also, because we all have had our own trials and tribulations in our lust and love affairs. Like, can I just be honest about that? So anyway, um, so we can learn from one another. And this is how we grow to our highest potential by actually learning from each other. It's very important that we have other people that we can kind of learn from and realize, man, I am not in this journey alone. There are other people that are going through some things similar to what I'm going through. And also there are people going through something that I have never even heard of. So maybe I can actually help someone else just from the knowledge of someone else's circumstance. So please, by all means, please share your experiences. And of course, my spiritual mission here is to guide people to their supreme self. So while we're on the planet, um, we should be trying to rise to potential. Okay. All right. So let's get started. We're going to dive in. We're going to talk about lust and love. So, what is a lust affair? What is a lust affair? Let me just put it up with what I have on here. I'm going to switch to the next. Um, a lust affair is a sexual affair with no invested relationship. So it's a sexual affair with no invested relationship. What that means is it's strictly about physical attraction and a sensual affair. So it's just basically about your physical needs being met, okay? So that's very important that you realize that this is what a lust affair is, okay? Any questions on that? Any questions, any questions? Okay. No. So let me also just say this, lust affairs, even though there's no relationship, it really seems to be an understanding. So we're in this dynamic for the now because we're, uh, we maybe have gone through what I call a qualifying event. So the qualifying events are as follows. We've just become single. We're newly separated. We are a widow or a widower. We don't really have a social circle. We're kind of a loner, introvert. We don't really have a lot of people we talk to. And we are emotionally stable. So what that means is, I said emotionally stable, not instable. Because I know when you hear that, no, normally we just automatically assume, well, she said emotionally unstable. No, I said stable. Why I say that is, in order to have a successful lust affair, you must be emotionally stable. You cannot be doing all of this and emotionally all over the place. Okay? So lust affairs do require for there to be some stability with your emotions, which means hmm, we're, we, we're doing this, but with the understanding that this is just for physical needs, sexual needs, for the time being. This most likely will not be a lifetime affair. Okay? Any questions on that? Somebody have a question? 
Um, somebody has somebody's making noise in the background. I'm not sure who it is, but it's echoing. We it's hardly you can't hear on the side. Okay, if you guys can mute your line so it's not disrupting, please. Thank you. Okay, so now I want to also explain that lust affairs are very pleasurable. They're fun and they're carefree. And shall I also admit to everybody that lust affairs usually are created by the outside in. Strong physical attraction and very sensual. Okay? So we're attracted by the outside in. That means we're physically moved. <laughs> physically attracted. We're, we like what we see. How about that? Okay? So we like what we see. Lust affairs can happen because of these, like I said, these events can happen and cause us to get into a lust affair. And we can do it in a way to where it's not corruptive. It's not causing problems. There's not a lot of drama. What happens is nobody's told us or given us any permission to have lust affairs. But here as your coach, I give you permission that if you have a qualifying event and you are emotionally stable and you feel as though, listen, I know I don't have a lust, I'm sorry, a love affair right now, but I do still have physical and se sexual needs, I'm giving you permission to do this. And anybody that I coach knows that I'm very big about giving that permission because a lot of times we're not. We're told that we should not get involved with this and to just deal with your sexual needs on your own in restraint and, and frustration and anger. And let me just tell you, the reason why I, I want to talk about lust affairs is because I had a very unique coaching circumstance. So it was a gentleman that I was coaching one time, and he had... He hadn't been in a love affair for a very long time. I would say he was probably mid-30s, not a bad-looking guy, but he was just really sexually frustrated. And he's like, what am I going to do? And I told him, well, uh, you do have a qualifying event. You are emotionally stable, but you don't have any, um, you're not going anywhere. You're going to work. And you're going home to work, to the grocery store, and home. So you don't even give yourself an opportunity to meet another female or anything. So you're really kind of capping yourself off to having even a lust affair at this point. So we talked about it, and I kept telling him, listen, you're going to have to. He was like, really, like, I'm really frustrated. Seriously, I'm, I'm really having a hard time. Do you know, he told me. And after I told him all kinds of resolutions, because, you know, I'm a resolution coach, I'm like, oh, well, you can do this and try this and go by. Do you have any friends that have a friend that maybe she's not having anything? I mean, what can you do? This man contacts me later and says, I just had to get a prostitute. <laughs> what? That is not okay. Are you serious? And so I laugh about it now. But, you know, at this point, I'm like, you know, um, I was watching another conversation with a gentleman and he was talking about how there needs to be uh, medical prostitution. And I thought, I've never heard of that. But what the hell does that mean? And he was just saying like, what is someone supposed to do if they have these sexual needs, but they don't have a partner? What, what's somebody supposed to do? They're in restraints. They're frustrated. And we have to prevent them from making a decision like this. Where are they supposed to go? And I said, I'm going to make sure in my practice of coaching to give someone an understanding, you need, you need to create a lust affair and make sure you're clear as to what you're doing in this affair. And then also, you want to understand that lust affairs, you normally do not want to upgrade to love affairs. And I'll explain why shortly. But anyway, this is why I am very big about talking about 
the frustrations in private that singles are having, widowers, you know, people that are loners are having with sexual needs, but no partners. So let's get let's get the conversation open so that we can come up with resolutions. So, like I said, lust affairs are great if you get it clear in the beginning. Is there any questions for anybody? So less can be a good thing. Yes. Well, he asked is if less is a good thing, yes. Because really, you don't have to have multiple partners for a lust affair. You can have one, and if you have one partner, at least you can understand you have that clear. This is just because of where I am in my stage or what I call my season. Because we have seasons in our lives that we don't talk about. And seasons sometimes come into different, um, I don't know, just because of different circumstances. So for instance, you can be in a full on love affair and everything's fine and then tomorrow it's over. Now something that you're used to getting, which would be sex and intimacy, you're all, 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 all of a sudden it's gone, it's done. You're gonna, it's gonna throw you into a discomfort. It's gonna throw you into a frustration. You're gonna get very upset and you're gonna have mood swings and not even know why because you're not getting intimacy. It's just what it is. Nobody wants to talk about it, but for me, I wanna make it known that this is just a real truth. Yes. Does lust affairs always have to include sexual, or can it just be intimacy? There's a difference. Well, so, as, so fill me in on what you mean by your intimacy. Morgan's asking if lust affairs can be just, does it only include sex, or can it be for just intimacy or conversation or, or anything like that? So for instance, right. You can't have a lust affair for that. Now, here's the thing some people get attached though. So you have to be careful if you're not being intimate with someone, but you're having all that relationship feeling, you're going and doing things, you're holding hands, you're holding each other, because you just kind of need to get raised, you just kind of need to touch. This is where um, energy body work comes in handy. So, of course, <laughs> you guys know I do energy body work. Yogi, the Yogi Latin on here, she does energy body work. That will help to kind of, I would say, curve the craving for the lack of touch because you will go through a touch starvation. Let's talk about that. Great question, Morgan. Touch starvation is a big deal. So touch starvation means that if you've been in a relationship for a long time, you usually hold, hug, kiss, have some type of intimacy going on. And then once it's over, if somebody even passes away, you're not having it. So what do we do? We get really frustrated. We get really um, uneasy in ourselves, and we don't know why. Well, the problem is you're, you're suffering from touch starvation. So look up for like a massage therapist or energy body worker, myself, the lab on here. We do it. We help people to to kind of dial back and curb the the, the starvation of, of lack of touch. Also, less affairs, I guess I want to understand too is, is there a limitation on how many affairs you should be having? Because yeah. I think right now, like it's in modern day, like if you're not in a relationship, it's you have multiple partners or you have just the one, and like in sleeping culture, you just have the one sleeping link and you have someone you right. take serious. Is if you're having a lust affair, is, should you just be with that one person or should you have multiple? It is your choice. One of the beautiful things about lust affairs is you can do it your way. <clears throat> But my thing is, if you are going to have multiple partners or multiple lust affairs, be clear, be open and understanding and let them know, listen, in my season that I'm in right now currently, I am not devoted to one person. I'm not in a commitment. I'm still trying to, you know, get over my last past relationship and I'm just trying to heal. So right now I'm just enjoying my life, enjoying myself and trying to engage and figure out if, you know, if I'm wanting some company and that's fine too a lot of times we don't talk about this and i feel like it's very important we do uh -huh. sure <laughs> um with most affairs is there no chance of ever upgrading it into a love affair or is there is there those one-off chances of it being upgraded for whatever reason so lust affairs like i said before 
I suggest they don't get upgraded to love affairs, and here's why. The reason why is the first start of lust affairs is normally from a pleasurable, carefree, fun space. You're very fun, it's intimate, we're having a good time. It's really a sensual, sexual, fun relationship. When you upgrade these types of relationships into love, love transforms to more obligatory. So you now have demands, commitment, obligations, and now you have an invested relationship. And now the pressure is really, is really getting hard for these relationships that are just lustful and full of fit, fun free. So when you have these type of love affair, lust affairs, you really don't want to upgrade them. And the reason I say that is because love affairs come with a lot more demand. Love affairs has a lot more commitment. Love affairs has a lot more, um, I would say, even just it's more of a soul connection. So love usually is created in a different way. Any questions on this? Any talks about this that anybody wants to share? Anybody had a lust affair that worked well? <laughs> you can speak on it. I know you're in a love affair now, but if you have a lust affair, please share. We need to hear you. And can you report him because he's he's a video artist. <laughs> camera. I mean, that like successful, like a successful lust affair. I, I haven't. I haven't. Been able to hear this. I feel like that. I think I and, and and so this is why a lot a lot of people don't like to admit them per se. I think they don't want to admit them because they're not supposedly um, what we would call uh, what's the word uh, socially acceptable. <laughs> I guess we're not really supposed to be doing these, but I'm giving permission that that's okay. We can do these, but a lot of times people don't want to advance or admit that it is okay to do these. I think the main thing is that I find challenging, especially with, like I said today, with like the sensitive culture and everything is that yeah. I think what you're saying is important to yeah. understand that this is what it is versus trying to make it into something more. And I think like, that's why I asked the question about like how many partners to have or not have, because I think a lot of times we get confused with, okay, we have this lust affair, but then we're doing things outside of just being intimate. Like yeah. We're going out, we're doing things, we're spending time. Yeah. So we're then, now you're, now you have the arguments. Baby. Yeah, now you have the arguments that you make about <laughs> Now you feel like you have to explain yourself to somebody. You have to explain why you took an act. You have to explain all these things. It's like, well, right. you're still a single person. So why does this person even have to say so on what you do? This is what great question by Morgan. She's explaining and expressing how it, when this when this line it's gets blurry, blurry <laughs> when we get a little bit blurry with lust affair versus love affair. We begin putting all the demands and the jealousy and the anger and why didn't you call me and I haven't heard from you and what's going on with you and why is this and why is that on lust affairs that's only supposed to be fun. We're only supposed to be having a good time. Why are we getting all this commitment stuff blurry over here in the lust affairs? Yes. My question would be, you would have to have communication with this yes. because okay. otherwise it takes off of playing with somebody's feelings and emotions. Absolutely. And you cannot always read that. And that becomes dangerous. Yes. And you right. read it from back and forth. Great point. So Novi shared that in lust affairs, you have to be crystal clear with your communication on making sure that it's clear on feelings. So you know, you know, I talk about when they change feelings, and especially feelings need to be upfront. And we need to be clear as to what we're doing while we're doing it so that we're not blurring the lines of, of the lusting, lust affair versus the love. Okay, I want to touch on real quick the development of lust affairs. So if you can remember, I try to make it easy to remember. This is very important. Lust affairs is from the outside in. So that means I'm attracted to you physically. You're moving me and, and you, I want to be physical with you. So there's a strong physical attraction. Love affairs are soul connected. 
They're more platonic. So that means we're more about friendship, more about soul connection, more about what are you into? I'm into this or all of that. We can we develop love affairs, proper love affairs from the inside out. So what that means is when I'm starting to first talk or date or get to know someone, I'm more interested in who are you? What are you about? What is what, what do you want to do with yourself? Uh, is there any passion about you? What do you got going on? Those are the ones that develop very well. It's a very good foundation for love affairs. Can you be attracted to someone that you will have a soul connection to that you're platonic with? Absolutely, yes. But what I'm saying is you shouldn't be driven by, oh, he's so hot and sexy or she looks, well, she's so sexy or whatever. It's more about the soul. Who is this person? And I want to know them from the inside out. I'm more craving to learn them. I'm more, I want to, I want to get to know who they are. What moves them? What makes them upset? What makes them happy? These kinds of, of relationships, when they're first being developed, create a more greater foundation for love. Make sense? Any questions? I also feel as far as the lust affair, um, like she was saying, multiple partners i feel like it, it depends on um mm -hmm. on your maturity level so like you you can't be doing trying to be doing a lot and you can't even um be mature about one if that makes sense so uh andre mentioned that morgan was asking earlier about the multiple lust affairs and he was saying you would be mindful depending yeah. upon your maturity level if you want multiple partners in your lust affairs, then you want to make sure that you can manage your emotions, <laughs> manage yourself, you can handle all of these different people, and if you're crystal clear, you have to be very upfront with what you're doing. My thing is, personally to me, that would be very limited because most people are not stable yeah. and not stable to handle all of that. Right. So they would tell you one thing, meaning something else. And it's just, I just see it like a thin line of being dangerous, really. Because they'll tell you that, and then all of a sudden they're going off because they read more into your body mm -hmm. language. I don't see too many people on the outside stable enough to handle that. Multiple, you're talking about? Multiple, Multiple and that's what you're right. Yeah. I, think, I think it's more, I think, especially now, like I said, I think it's more of this the thin line between okay we're doing this thing that's very intimate it's very it, it's that you draw a connection whether you want it to be love or not whether right. it's love or lust you're building a connection with somebody yes. by giving them your body yes by the time you really you know like once it gets to a certain point where you've been doing this consistently for so a certain right. amount of time for time yeah. now there's feelings and everything involved now you're talking about someone's call like i said you're getting called you're getting okay i heard you must this person that person uh, why are you talking to this person? I thought that it was just me. I thought it was just you. Or I understood that you liked a lot of people, but now I don't care about that because now I like you. Like the whole, I think you just can get very um, sticky. Sticky if, if you aren't if you aren't stable and if you're not mature enough to handle it. And that's mean? why I said lust affairs are made for emotionally stable people. Period. And that's very few. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then let me also say sides. this because I want to I want to use this as an example. So you might be most there was a person, there's a person I know personally that yeah. he had a lust affair um with a man's wife um when his when he got incarcerated. So he made an agreement with his friend that it was okay for him and his wife to be intimate while he was incarcerated. Oh, that's and so and so he allowed the arrangement, the lust affair. But what the guidelines was is when they began to feel feelings for each other, they were to part ways for two weeks. No contact for two weeks. So one started feeling something for the other or vice versa, they had to separate for two weeks. And it worked. So again, you have to be able to so be clear. Two weeks and then well, yeah, they would they would, they would part ways for two weeks and split away from the lust affair, the intimacy, 
and then they would reconnect after the two weeks was over. So basically that was the guideline and for whatever reason, I don't know how it worked, but that seemed to work and it, they both would but, and, and there was an understanding ahead of time. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> it was an ahead of time arrangement. So I, there was a clarity up front. Miss Carla, I've experienced that. Do you feel like it's different for men versus women? Because that's like the main like deciding factor. A lot of times, people feel like, oh, you know, guys can do it; they can dip one, dabble one, do what they want to do. But women, it's like, no. As soon as you do it one time, she's calling your phone, stalking you with those high knee wishes. Like, um, I think different. I personally, because I know that there's been a new. There's been a new found understanding within the people that I've kind of come in contact with because I, I kind of expand my knowledge of women. And I'm starting to notice that there's more women in a poly mindset. So with monogamy, there's not, there's not this, well, I can only be with one person. So I'm noticing more women are actually finding themselves okay with having multiple lovers and not getting so caught up in, you've been with this one or you've been with that one. And they just kind of, it just depends on the woman. Again, I believe personally, and you know, as a coach, I'm always gonna tell you, if you have a belief, and I don't care what belief it is, if you are headstrong on being all in for poly, then please study about mono. If you're all headstrong about mono, then please study about power. Because the reason why is studying is very important to expand the mind of understanding, not just yourself, but learning intelligently about others and how others work. I have been, I was personally brought up in an all monogamous family. That's all I knew. So imagine coaching. Couples that aren't anything like what I'm what I was brought up in. Well, I had to learn to study on what how does poly work? What is the guidelines of poly? What is it that poly people do? How does this, how did is there any issues? Does this work for everybody? Or no? It just depends on studying and learning and expanding your mind. It's very important. I think she uh Delise had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Delise. What were you what was your question, though? It wasn't a question, Coach. It was a statement. The statement is the fact that having multiple having multiple lust partners, it, it's a very different experience. And according to whatever age you are, I'm in my 50s, and I just restarted. As my young folks said, you don't restart it, so your car to merge with different people, different ages, having different lust partners, I've learned not to get emotionally attached to any of them. I don't put my emotion into it. Okay, Delise, good point. So how did you, what do you do to keep your emotions away from, what is your guidelines to keep your emotions intact? I established that my mission is just to be satisfied and I'm attracted to these particular persons for just that reason. So you just set the tone and making sure you are crystal clear that this is only for this and that's it. So yeah, I set the tone between the two, communicating with the opposite sex to let them know, look, there's nothing going to go further than this. You have needs, I have needs. We're interested in each other. We're attracted to each other. It's all about lust. It ain't about love. Okay, so you have it crystal clear. Good point. I was just going to say, I feel like like the lust affair is cool, but I was, I was just thinking about it recently. I feel like it kind of um, is nice, but if you have somebody, like say for instance, you got a job. If you got a job, you, everything's good. You're not looking for a job. Um, you can get kind of comfortable within that and it could last for a long time, especially if you're having fun. But like, if you didn't have that, you'd be looking for it. possibly a love affair or it would happen more, more organically because you're not, you're open to it. You're, you know what I'm saying? You might be looking to manifest it. Um, so I feel like lust affairs are good, but I feel like they can get a little, um, like everything's good within moderation. Like I, I wouldn't want to be in a lust affair the rest of my life. Like I want I want love. I want somebody that 
Oh, I want all that. I want somebody who I can right. actually call my own and not be wondering if she's lusting after somebody else or looking at doing this or doing that. Like, okay, so good point. So Andre was saying that he would like to have a love affair and would not be okay with lust affairs to be his end all to be all. Again, earlier I was explaining that lust affairs are usually for a season, a season in your life. You don't know when the season is, you don't know how long or whatever, but it's a season. So if you are in a lust affair and it is a season, that doesn't mean it's forever. But if you do, if you do want to, if you do want to have a love affair and you have a lust affair, you can decipher between the two and, and understand you can still develop love affairs even if you have a lust affair. Yes. With lust affairs, if you're not on um, top of your game one-on-one, -on -one, all of that can turn into a fatal attraction. Then you're stuck, somebody's stalking you. I just see, like, it's just a thin line. And it takes a lot to be able to cope with all of that and have a lust affair. Um, damn, I was just gonna get what you said. Um, okay, that was gonna ask. So, what are some questions or like how do you test the water with somebody up front? Because I feel like that's what you have to do, especially because, like I said, it's it's fine if you're emotionally mature, if you're emotionally stable enough to handle lust affair, right? But to 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 make sure that the person that you're engaging in that lust affair is on the same page as you, yes, without lying, because I feel like that's the problem too, is that people are like, oh no, I can handle, I'm fine, like right, right, right. I'm good, like it's just sex, fine. And then, like, you get into it, and the next thing you know, that's that's when things go awry. And you're like, you just told me you were fine with this. Where did where did, where did, it, where did this go wrong? And then, how long of a period? Oh. Of a love affair. You're learning somebody. You know, okay. you're talking to them, spending a lot of time, like you know, going on dates or things like that. How do you go? How much time do you invest in somebody before you engage into a lust affair? Should it be a shorter period of just? Hey, how are you? My name's Morgan. Good. We're on our way. Or is it more like we sit down and have this conversation? What questions do we ask? I think it's very important that if you are going to get involved in a lust affair, that you have some type of understanding from the job. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's going to take. I can't really put a time frame on it, but I would definitely say that the clearer you are on why you're needing a lust affair to yourself is vital. Why do I need this lust affair? Let me be honest with me. So, is it because I'm newly single and newly separated? Is my sexual needs or my lack of sex really causing a stir in my soul, in my being? Am I frustrated? Am I finding myself moody? Am I not on my A game? What is it that I need a lust affair for first? You have to have this understanding with you first. So before you get in any kind of lust affair, it's vitally important you understand why you need it and why it, and it is okay to say to yourself, I am sexually frustrated or I am sexually not getting what I usually get. So I am now in a de deficit and my body is calling for sex. That is okay. It is not, it is not reason to be shallow or shy about it. Be honest with you first. Now, once you get that understanding, here's the thing. Nine times out of ten, if you have, if you have a lust affair need, you will find out that the, that the person that is in the same circumstance as you is one of those things. Like I said, they're not, they're newly single, newly separated, they lost their husband or wife, or they don't have a social circle. Those are key elements that will tell you. Yeah, this person is probably in the same circumstance as I am. That is how you know, okay, this person is where I'm at. And then you could start to have the conversations. Well, why do you feel like you need one? Well, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of going through it sexually, or I'm just, I just, I just want some time with someone. I just haven't been hugged in a long time. Anything so that you can figure out, well, here's where the element of truth is. Because we first have to be true to ourselves. In order to tell the truth to someone else. Make sense? Any questions on the line? No. Go ahead. Yo, uh, Lev, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Oh, I said no. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Morgan. Um, 
Can you touch real quickly on you keep saying about being newly single, like that your check percentage has changed? Yeah. So when you say less than 30, not just for, and then the last, the last one being is still involved for X or still involved with X level or spouse. What did I say? Oh, so we're switching to the next page. She's well, no, 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 you are touching on Oh, wait, that's why I thought. I okay, thought, no. So we're going to go to the next slide. We'll go to the next slide because she moved on. Okay, so <laughs> lust affairs are not good for these instances. All right, ready? They are not good for those looking for love. If you're looking for a love affair, lust affairs are not for you. If you are easily with, <clears throat> so if you're someone that as soon as you have intimate sex with someone, you just want to be with them or you want to have it constantly or you can't get enough of it, not for you. Lust affairs won't work for you, okay? You're insecure, which means you, you have insecurity issues. You, you're not really secure in yourself. You're not confident. You're immature, not for you. Lust affairs will not be good for you. You're clingy or highly attached. I'm sorry, highly emotional. If you're a highly emotional person. Lust affairs are not for you. All right? You uh, have deals with addictive behaviors. So addictive behaviors are some, someone that cannot stop doing something. It's not healthy. Lust affairs are not for you. You're still involved with an ex-spouse or a relationship or an ex-lover. You are still over there with your ex and you want to now involve yourself in the lust affair, not a good call. Because that's going to be a lot of drama. So I'm trying to help you out with saving it from, from doing those things. So these are, these are some of the no-goes. Reasons I said that you don't want to do these in a lust affair is because a lot of times um, if you cannot really handle certain sexual activity with people without getting attached, it's not going to be to your benefit to try to do a lust affair. And I'll tell you why. Because if you do a lust affair and someone takes you to a newfound sexual experience that you've never had before, and you are not prepared to handle that. You can find yourself very whipped, very, very out, land. I mean, you're just out, out of your mind. And it's hard to get over. It's just as strong as love affairs. So you have to be careful. Okay? So if you have any of these issues, strongly would suggest you don't. Or I would say work on yourself first and then then well yeah well like Andre said work on these issues before you get into something like that. Jordan, mm -hmm. you had a question about this? Yeah, so let's mm -hmm. still involved with the ex-lover, what's that look like? <laughs> like when you say involved, like you mean still sexually still sexually involved, still emotionally attached, still you still haven't really detached from them, mm -hmm. like you're still really um in that relationship with them. But you might say you're not together, but you or one moved out or whatever, but you're still talking to them that, like they're still lovers. You're still kind of reaching out for stuff, especially if you have children involved. It's hard to just detach and be done with the ex baby mama, baby father drama. I mean, it's just a lot. So if you're still having that kind of, um, I would say, uh, attachment to them, you may not want to get yourself in a lust affair prematurely because it's going to cost you a lot of headache because that's going to just bleed over to a lot of drama that you really, really don't want to have. Any questions? Questions? Any questions? You got questions? Okay. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about what lust affairs improves. Lust affairs do improve some things. Um, for those that have come out of relationships that they, you know, like an ex or a sad breakup or a separation or a loss, 
they lost someone through death or they just lost their love affair. Um, one of the great things that lust affairs can improve is it can improve your sexual frustration. That's number one. So when you're not sexually frustrated, yeah. you can find yourself more focused. You're able to do things that you would normally do without having to feel like, man, I just feel like I can't, I can't be settled in my soul because I got this frustration, this sexual frustration going on inside me. And it, it, even through masturbation, it's wow. still not helping. I'm still, still frustrated. It's yeah. really ticking me off. Right. Lust yeah. affairs can help with that. Lust affairs can also help with self confidence. Yeah. Sometimes we need someone else to show us our beauty. Sex is very good for that. Sexual energy, when you are involved sexually with someone, they can show you you. So when you are intimate ladies with a man and that man is making love to you, he is showing you your beauty. Men, when you are with a woman, she is showing you your handsomeness. This is the kind of stuff nobody talks about, but this is what it is. This is why when you're in a love affair or in a lust affair and you getting it, you have a confidence. You have a strong confidence and you have, you have not only a confidence, but you have more, um, I would say magnetism. And this is what's important because a lot of times we lose our flair, our sexy and everything else when we get out of a relationship. Cause we're just like, I'm so hurt. I'm so sad. I don't have anything. I don't have anybody. Nobody cares about me. On and on and on. But when you have someone making love to you, that helps build your self confidence. Okay. Now, also, another really good thing about these lust affairs that's great is it does help with you becoming more physically flexible. Sex helps to build your flexibility. It helps you from not being stiff. It helps you from being more flexible. It helps you to get more grounded. You would be amazed at how sex really improves. I tell all of my clients that I work with that it is vitally important that they study what sex is good for. All of them. All of my clients knows I'm going to make you go check that out. Do you know what sex is good for? And I make them study it. And the reason why is because you need to know what does it do for the body for not just the women, but the men as well. Sex is a very good thing for you on so many levels. All right. It also is good for your immune system. It does build your immune system. It makes you better, highly immune to a lot of sicknesses out here. Yes, it helps you with build your immunity. You can also have better rest. I have a client that has contacted me because she got into a lust affair and she said, I slept like a baby. I said, yes, you got it, girl. Okay, so yes, you, you got it. When you get when you get great sex, you get better rest. You sleep like a baby, guaranteed. Also for, I need to put this up on for women. Women, we, as we age, we have a tendency to have to wear depends. And that comes from our um, incontinence situation. When you have sex as a woman and as you're aging and you have sex, it reduces incontinence. So you might not have to wear the depends no more. So it is very good for women. And for men, it helps to lower your prostate cancer risk. Sexual energy is very good for that as well. So these are the good things that lust affairs are good for. This is why when I tell you, listen, you cannot lose your sexy. You guys know, and Morgan will tell you, I tell my daughter all the time, don't lose your sexy, girl. Mm. Don't. <laughs> I tell her all the time, keep it sexy. Listen, that's important because our magnetism and our happiness within ourselves comes from our love of self. But also when a person is making love to you, they are showing you how beautiful you are, male and female, period. So when you have someone giving you that 
almost like um, the reiteration to your soul, you matter. That's what these are good for. And don't feel embarrassed. If you are in a stage where you're like, man, I'm struggling and I got to admit it to me first so that I can get this figured out and handled, well, that's why you came here. All right, so that's what this is good for. So do you believe that, because I know right now there's also been conversations as far as like what happens to your, you mentally when you go through like a, you know, a, break a period of, no, like a period of celibacy or celibacy. Um, things like that where like men will say, oh, I'm trying to do like a, what's that called, like a senior or something. Senior and, it's good, and it's good for my whatever. It is. But so my, my what I'm actually trying to ask is, is there, a certain journey you should go on before even trying to engage in a lust affair. Absolutely. So I think, personally, anytime you're deciding to do anything in your sex life, lust affair, love affair, even if you're ready to go into a love affair again because you've been outside of one, as an example, I definitely think you need to do a, take a journey into in your own soul to figuring out what is it that I need. A lot of times we don't talk about lust affairs. This is why I wanted us to have the conversation so that we could talk about this. A lot of people are not talking about it, so they don't even know this is an option. We don't talk about this. We only talk about love affairs. But what do you do when you're in between lust and love? Well, first of all, I, you guys always know I talk about loving yourself, self-love. Self-love is vital, but also we need to actually ask ourselves, where are we deficient in our life? Is there a deficiency sexually? Is there a deficiency mentally? Is there a deficiency emotionally? Is there a deficiency in our meditation? Are we deficient in our smile mantra? We all know the smile mantra, right? So we have to study, meditate, inspire others, laugh, and elevate every day. So here's the mantra to live by. So before we get into any, any lust affair, love affair, or even celibacy, whatever we're going to decide to do, we need to first do these things first. Study, meditate, inspire others, laugh, and elevate. This is important. This needs to be a practice every day. Because no matter what you do in your lifetime, I don't care if you decide to say, I'm just going to go into a nunnery. I'm just going to be celibate for life, whatever it is. Or I'm going to get my groove on for the rest of my life and just be in lust affairs forever. Whatever you decide, or I want to be in love forever. Whatever that is, that's fine. But you need to make sure that you first dive inside yourself. Do the self work. Any questions? I guess I'm, I really, I really, 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 like I said, I see this all the time, and I get, I get so many arguments with people, and I, I kind of get me with this, but <laughs> I just want to understand, like, how, because, like, I think it was the Lee said that she's able to disconnect her feelings. I really don't want to understand how people do that. Like, I, I really want to understand how you're able to just completely, because, like you said, when you're intimate with somebody and you're having friends with somebody, they're showing you a part of yourself, correct? Yeah. So they're showing you that you're beautiful. They're showing so then it, even in your head, even if you could not even be attracted to this person, but in, but in that moment you're like, wow, this person makes me feel amazing. So how do you? And it's like you leave. And I did see somebody say like, uh, what's the word? Because somebody said uh, the the sneaky concept like isn't a thing. Like there's no way that you can have sex and not gain feelings or whatever. But it was like, it's almost the yearning of, okay, our sex is amazing. What if I could have sex with this person forever? Like, how do you how do you just block that part off of like, okay, we had sex and now we're sitting here fucking for hours. Now we're sitting here, um, you know, catching up. Yeah, eating, eating foods. Yeah, like now, now, we're, now we're bar hopping together. Now we're going out and doing this. Like, how do you separate the two completely? Especially knowing how powerful sex is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's sex, my point. That's like, the most powerful I, part of the process. Like, because, like, because you're literally connect, like, you're yeah. tying your soul to this person, yeah, and you're telling me what you get about, like, because in my head, when you talk about us, and you're just like, you know, set separate feelings. In my mind, the way I picture it is like that person comes over, you do the do, they get it, they leave. 
And it's like now, like knowing like how people know, like I've never heard a story like that. Like I like the stories I've heard from friends, family, with like I've never heard of it just being like, oh, they drop it off, they get up, they go home. Like, no, it's we sat there, we talked for a minute, we smoked, chill. we chill, chill. we chill. <laughs> like but afterwards, it, like not even like, you gotta hold me, but we like, sit there just chill and watch the TV show together. Like, you got to know what you are, you are capable of handling then. Oh, it's very important. I, listen, it's very important that you know your self emotion. Are you able to do a lust affair? That's something you have to talk to yourself about. Because the reason I say that is not everybody that can emotionally do this. It's just, it's just a fact. Not everybody's going to be. To the trauma aspect of like you, even if you thought you were ready, or even if you were ready, and now it's like you either the other person catches feelings, or you might have cut feelings, or things get weird. There was that one off situation where maybe you did get into something, then you get into the whole ghosting aspect. Now you're questioning, like, why did I even do this? Why did I come up in this situation? Why did I even like now you're now you're more traumatized from that situation than you even were in it, possibly a situation or relationship that you were beforehand. Why I keep saying it is vitally important. <laughs> Everybody listen to me. It's very important that you really pay attention to what mm -hmm. you can handle. So what I mean by that is what have and okay, say for instance, you've only been with one person or you've never had a lot of priors before the last love affair or whatever. And you really don't know because you haven't had a lot of experiences. Then maybe what, what you should do is maybe just, just start with platonic friendships first. Get to know people, have friends, and then also what might also be important is reach out to your friends that you trust. Do you guys know anybody that is in a situation that may be in a arrangement that they kind of just came out of something and they just are in a bind? Because again, we don't know what we don't know. And until we try something, we're not going to really know our own history. We have to go. And yes, you might get bumps and bruises along the way, but it is very important that you just don't shut down your whole being because you're afraid. Carla. Yes. I like to say something and I, I like to have people think about when they are in love with that person in the first situation and then they go through the breakup. Think about how you were in love with that person and then put that same love and equal it to yourself. Can you deeply fall in love with yourself the same way that you fell in love with that person prior? Because if it's not there, you will have complications in the lust affairs. So if you don't deeply love yourself, there is no reason for you to even go anywhere else. So when you feel that sensation of loving yourself, that's when you make a move. Very good, very good. And I, and I think it's very important that what you said, but is the loving of self is key. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying to, to really talk to yourself mm -hmm. about your true, honest reasoning behind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. No matter if you're going celibate, because I don't think people talk about that enough. I'm glad Morgan brought that up. There are people that say, I'm just going to go cold turkey, no sex again. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just going to go celibate. That's fine, but are you talking to yourself about these true instances? When you are in need, when you're in a, in a uh, sexual frustration, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, those are just questions you gotta ask yourself to be honest. So what are some disadvantages then? Of, I think some disadvantages of disadvantages of what's the Well, I think you, you fit a lot of them. Some of the disadvantages of the lust you, you get me if you catch feelings. I think that's the number one thing. Catching feelings. More than anything, is the hardest part. I would say because they're sexual. Those are very excessive. That's my opinion. That's the one. Well, I would hope that if you're doing lust of fear, you would be. But no, I said I would. <laughs> No, 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 we're being honest, mom. Okay, I said I would vote, I didn't say I was confident. Because <laughs> people don't 
don't have a coach like you know what I'm saying. You don't have somebody to talk to to like talk to them, talk to them about or talk them out of getting into lesson theory, talk them into getting into lesson theory. Right. So I guess this see both sides because again, like I've said before, like, it just takes that one concentration. I need the bond. Like now, now it's an issue. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like lust there really have we have to start with self. You have to start by yourself. What is it that you really need? So I guess we should we should all talk about that. Can we all be honest? What are some of the things that when you're single that you struggle with? Can everybody say one thing that they struggle with single? Um, that no one really talks about because they hey. <laughs> I was going to say, um, probably loneliness because I mean, okay, wait a minute. I was going to say, um, the struggles that we're dealing with. Okay, so struggles. So, mine right now is loneliness because, like, I was in a relationship, a long relationship, we were stepping together for a while. It's actually one time. So, like, we see each other every day. So, that got me from um, seeing each other, seeing someone every day to just be by myself. It's kind of like I'm trying to get used to that, like being my own best friend, like, or my own best company. Yeah. Oh. Let me ask you, how long were you in your relationship? Seven years. Oh. <laughs> so you were in a seven year relationship. Yeah. 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 When you can look back, you know, when you were if you in its development, see this is the Adam. When we were developing into our affair here, what did what sparked it? Were you more outside in or inside out? It was mostly inside out because okay. we started out as friends and even before we had sex, like I had to wait a whole year, like two years away on the on the time. You know, like, um, <laughs> Just building that connection from the inside out. That's why it was kind of hard, like to break walls when you look like good, but I mean, at the same time, like I think I'm in my own. Hey! So, in your seven years, so so what made this relationship so good? Was it the fact that you're breaking that? This is a fresh one. Bad time, man. It's October. You, you broke up in October too? End of October. Oh, that's, that was mine too. My, 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 my. It was a bad time. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, even the love affair for seven years, and then you broke up. Yeah. 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 They're saying it's not always a loss, but what I'm saying is you guys ended it. You ended it. And his struggles right now is loneliness. Okay. 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 When you were single. Well, when you were single. Long, 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 long time ago, last. I've been single in a minute. I know, but um, <laughs> do you remember or recall any of the struggles? <laughs> Anyone I like that into? I got some quotes. If you give me a minute. <laughs> you always had women. Okay, so that's what you got. You know, 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 you you didn't have you didn't oh, struggle with this hat fight like, when you were in you hey, your player days, you didn't struggle with just one one person or once my day once you what I was saying is I was saying that you were asking the question, what is it like being single? When you're I was saying, what, you're, what's the struggle? What's the what's the what struggle, the struggle, the struggle of, is this, yeah. you wake up. You're alone, you eat alone, you sleep alone, you wake up, you're aroused, and nobody's there but you. So you have to, yeah, it's, a, it's frustrating being by yourself, knowing that, yeah, you may have lust affairs, they might be in other affairs too. You know, it's, it, being single is not easy. When you, 
mm-hmm. if you wake up by yourself in the middle of the night, it's like, okay, nobody's there. So you got to. So you're saying, so you're saying, you're also saying, oh, this is hard too. Yeah. Comparison is another one. I'm sorry, Glad to say that again. Comparing, comparison, you know, comparing to other things, you know, other things out there based off what we think we should be having. Very good. I love that one. Comparison's good. Ah. Especially, especially nowadays, everybody on TikTok and think all the skits are real and shit. Like, why? <laughs> why do you think these skits are real? Like, uh, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I want to. I want to be like these people on TikTok. When when uh, I come in the house, they're so excited to see me. And this, I'm like, bro, you watch the TikTok. You think they didn't rehearse that before right. they recorded? Right, like, right, right, right. you think that would just happen? Like, all they just have hidden cameras around. Like, oh, babe, look. Oh, wow. what you do with your hair and all this and that. Um. I was gonna say, basically, I feel like as far as lust affairs, when you first get out of a relationship and all that, I feel like it would be good to not be spiteful and do that. Like a lot of people get out of a relationship and try to be spiteful and get into a lust affair because they just had a, a love affair. So they're like, okay. they're just bounced. They're like, oh, That's fuck good. this. I'm gonna, excuse my language, uh, forget this and I'm gonna go and, and have a friend with I'm benefits or a lust affair. Since you want to be cute. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, and as far as, being single or whatever, I would say, um, like you said, like being your own best friend, like when you're used to doing everything, like say watching a show or a movie and you're sitting there having like laughing about it, it's not the same when you're sitting there laughing by yourself. Like everybody knows that you're sitting there watching stand up comedy, it's not the same. Yeah, or you want to share it with somebody you expect you normally share it. Now I'm sharing everything to myself. Like, what the, <laughs> I gotta save everything. Yeah, so save I video. Know. Mostly everybody gets the loneliness piece. That's the toughest part because it's like I've always had someone here. There's always been somebody next to me. There's always been somebody. I mean, even if I wasn't in good standing with them, at least we were, you know, bickering a little bit from each other. It was something that I lost, and the major loss was the loneliness. It, it basically having someone not be there. So that seems to be the hardest part. Um, and this is why I, I want everybody, if you are in the midst of <laughs> coming out of something, since it seems like most people here are coming out of something, um, don't make the loneliness be your guide, I guess. Always remember that when you are lonely, that's the best time to work on yourself. I know that sounds boring as hell, and it sounds so cliche, but it's so true. When you're lonely, this is the time when you can focus on learning something. That was a study. I know my that was going to be my that was going to be my single joke for so much love. Like learning to love myself. Yeah, because when you were with somebody like outside of the loneliness, like you were with somebody like you really, they kind of guide you on how you feel about yourself that day. Like you don't get that constant reassurance like, oh, you look good, or maybe you don't look good. Like you you have to. Yeah, like trying to trying to find yourself is that is probably the biggest thing because it's like yeah. <laughs> but, but, but no, but I'm saying like when you because especially in the depending on the type of relationship that you're in, like you know, sometimes when things go south, people feed things into you. So, like, trying to get that voice out of your head, too. Like, let's say you're getting in on the best of terms. So, you're now all you hear in your head is like, oh, you're a stale person, or oh, you, you suck in these areas of life. Like, trying to find the confidence in yourself is probably like, oh, that is the thing. What have you been in an actual relationship for? And, and I can tell you this I do have a course <laughs> called Path to Reinvention. And the reason I created the course was because. When the child that's speaking right here was a little thing, I had came out of a relationship with her father and a lot of um, badgering and negativity on who I am as a woman, um, even physically. I mean, just a lot of just negative stuff. He would pound into my head. I had to, le- I had to learn to unlearn that stuff and come up with a way to reinvent. 
And the reinvention wasn't necessarily that I was trying to change myself to not be who he said I was, but I had to unlearn all the negative. Because those negative, badgering words were constantly in my mind. I'd be like, what does that mean? Like he would say this or he would say that, and I would be so aggravated by it, but those words I kept hearing. So what I started to do was, that's why I always tell Morgan to tap into her sexy, and it's it's for all everybody here, is the reason why you want to tap into your sexy is because you have to be the you have to be the guy to get to get those nasty words, those nasty, ignorant ass statements they would make to you out of your head and you have to be yes, your yes. biggest cheerleader. Basically what yeah. I had to do when I did the, well, Delise has taken path to your reinvention, but what I had to do was literally every single thing he would say about me negative. I don't care what it was. You have thick thighs or you, you get out of shape or whatever. I had to go and start loving on that one thing every single day. And I didn't stop. I had to keep loving it, loving it, loving it, loving, actually loving through it. And it was a job. <laughs> it was a job because I had to now go through, well, am I really loving it? Well, is it a little bit? Maybe. Yeah, I didn't need to work on it, but how do I love? Let me get out of that thinking and let me just appreciate it. Do, do you realize there's some amputees that would love to have your guys? Why you mad? You know, so it's like you literally have to recreate in your mind beautiful person from the inside yeah, out first and then the physical things we can change yes but we don't have to be perfect we have to learn to get out of that we have to unlearn those vicious words because when people are in relationships some of them are not healthy they're mentally not healthy and so what they do is they badger you with their unhealthy shit so now i got all this stuff that they bombarded me with, that, that, was their, that was their stuff. And I'm thinking, I'm, is this really me? Am I really this? And I'm a damn good mom, I'm a damn good friend, I have best friends for life. Why is my ex being, why are those words so like loud in my soul? Well, it was a force inside my soul to learn to love myself. So even though those words were loud, they were actually the best thing that could happen. Because now I would never let someone, what they say, even make me feel a certain way, if that makes sense. Because I've now built up to a point where my self-love just cancels all that stuff out. Like, I don't care what they say. And I'll, be, and I'll be honest with the fact that it's all great. Not, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll be honest, like that's probably the main reasons why I don't involve myself in either war is because yeah, love right. or less right now. Yeah, because I mean I'm coming up for probably almost a year well, not actually so probably almost, yeah. almost a year being single. And that and that yeah. voice is still so loud. Yeah. So like when you come out of an unhealthy situation or when you come in a situation where somebody is really like demeaning to you. Like it's so hard for you to to get to a point where you're like, okay, I love myself, but then also, you know, they take effect on like even people on outside. So like I go into situations and I automatically don't trust you. Like I and automatically don't want to be Or if that or you it's already been really told to you, like I remember getting yelled at saying like it, like the members you don't do is beat you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm already that, that voice is still too loud for me to even involve myself in less or love. But then it's like I need to figure out <clears throat> what I want, what I like, what I like to do, what I need. Because if because if I because if, <laughs> if I if I if I involve myself with somebody right now, I'm gonna I'm coming way too much, regardless if it's love or lust. Because like if if I'm looking for lust, I'm just trying to fill one void. I already know myself. Yeah. I'm gonna get too much. I'm loving it, so it's it I'm always gonna feel the other side. So I know that end up involving myself too much or caring about the other person yeah. way too much. But yeah, that's that's why I say. That lesson love is real. Well, the untrusting, I have to say this because a lot, a lot of people that I I know for a fact has come to me for coaching. They have told me that they have trust issues. And most likely we're going to talk about trust issues in the next go around. But trust issues are really um, tough because 
we we come from a space of distrust because someone we trusted <laughs> caused us to not trust again. But we have to learn, and I'll go over this probably next time. We're going to talk about the 90 10 rule. You never want to be a victim in your own life. But what that means is you can't really control someone else's mess up, abuse, rape. You can't control what someone else does to you. But what you can control is how you perceive it. That is huge for your life at all times. Do you realize that someone can be in pursuit to murder you and take you off the planet and you can get shot and killed with a gun in your possession? That can happen because you're not, you didn't know that they were gonna shoot from there. They shot over here. I thought I was gonna see them point the gun at me. No, you can't control what someone's going to do. But what you can control is how you perceive it. So it's very important to always remember mm -hmm. in, in this lifetime, we cannot control someone else. Trust issues comes from lack of trusting self. That's it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once we get over mm -hmm. that, we can also realize that, oh, I can't control someone else's moves, what they do. And always remember that in your life, you've trusted someone and they didn't fail. You've trusted someone and they were good to you. So don't always think because you had a bad situation, a bad breakup, a bad relationship, abusive relationship, any of those things, don't think everybody else is going to cause that because that's not true. It's our perception, how we perceive it. What we have to remember is we control how we perceive something that's happened to us. <clears throat> can't control it. Can't control someone else's actions. But what we can control is how we deal with what happens to us. Always remember that's very important. Plus, um, the more the more we worry about, like whether we think about something and worry about it, or we focus on it because we want it to bring like bring into our life with manifestment. So, like, makes the universe doesn't know whether whether you're complaining about something, worrying about something, or looking at, to bring it along. So, like, right. If you're like, oh, um, I don't want this, or I don't want that. Like you're basically saying, I do want it. Yeah. Anything that you say that you that anything that you put out there, you, you're then you're bringing to you. Right. So if, if you're worried about something not happening or if something happening, then don't even think about it. Just take right. it out and focus on what you did, like the inverse. You can't about. control it. The yeah. only thing we cannot do is we can't control what someone else is going to do. We just can't. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can live this life understanding that I'm just going to not get so caught up in what happened to me in the past. That's something that I can't fix. It's something that, you know, is what it is. But not every other person that I come in contact with is that person. Just because someone tries to state something in your life or tell you this is what's going to happen to you and all that, they're not that fortune teller. So don't give them the credit. Always remember you can create your life the way you want your life to be. If you still have work to do in your own soul, then there's no reason to jump into anything like that. It's fine. But just know that if you do get to the point that you're feeling some type of way or you're having some type of issues going on, these are options. We don't have enough time to talk about the options that are available to us. So we feel stuck. This way I wanted to give you guys options so that you can now think about something else you can use and take advantage of if in need. If you need to. Okay. So everybody, I appreciate you guys coming. I thank you. If you guys have anything you guys need, please reach out to me. I am a coach. You can reach out to me. You can go online to my website www.smileandsip.com. Next month will be February the 19th. I think we can go to the next one. Yeah, the 19th of February is the next month. So please be sure to join us. Please bring friends. Um, I'm loving to build this and, and make, make it bigger. So please make sure to um, invite more and more people, okay? So I appreciate everybody for coming. Um, again, we'll see you on the 19th, and I think we're going to talk on trust issues.
All right, guys. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for coming. Bye -bye. Best kept. Bye, caller Nicole. Best kept. Thank you. We're right. good. Y'all will see the worst in me. All right, all right. Right here.